exclusive new details in the death of award-winning journalist Michael Hastings. The FBI said that Hastings was never under investigation despite the journalist's apparent concerns that he was the target of a federal probe. The 33-year-old was killed in a fiery one-vehicle crash early Tuesday morning in Hancock Park. Hastings is best known for a 2010 magazine article that led to the resignation of General Stanley McChrystal, who was the former U.S. and NATO forces commander in Afghanistan. Our Carolyn Costello received an exclusive email Hastings sent just before his tragic death. I thought he was a great person. I mean, he spoke the truth. I mean, he said what needed to be said. He said what a lot of people were scared to say. You know, and it does offend a lot of people, but the truth hurts. Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs knew Michael Hastings well. Hastings was embedded with Biggs' unit in Afghanistan back in 2008. He tells us the two have kept in touch over the years. It had been several months since they last spoke when Biggs got an email from Hastings that didn't seem quite right. Monday morning, I woke up and I get an email and it's very panicked. Big says he was blind copied on the email sent to Hastings colleagues. It reads, hey, the feds are interviewing my, quote, close friends and associates. Perhaps if the authorities arrive at BuzzFeed GQ or HQ, may be wise to immediately request legal counsel before any conversations or interviews about our news gathering practices or related journalism issues. Also, I'm on to a big story and need to go off the radar for a bit. It, it alarmed me very much. I was... I, I wrote a few things, I told a few people about it, I just said it doesn't seem like him. In a sense, I just, I don't know, I just had this gut feeling and it just really bothered me. The email was sent just before 1 Monday afternoon. 15 hours later, Hastings was killed in this fiery crash on Highland Avenue. Strangers showed up to the scene to pay their respects. I'm hoping uh, nobody was following him and... He just lost control. Breaking news photographer Scott Lane happened to be less than a mile from the scene of the crash Tuesday morning and shot this video. Video from his car's dash camera caught what appears to be Hastings Mercedes minutes before the crash, speeding through a red light. 34 seconds pass and no other cars pass through the intersection. There's no cars that are following him. And there's he, he flies by 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds goes by. No cars are following him. And while conspiracy theories circulate on the internet about what might have led to this fiery crash, Staff Sergeant Biggs tells us he just hopes to learn the truth about the events leading up to his friend's death. Well, I just, I'm going to be willing to help and do whatever I can. Though. I want to make sure that people will look and look into this story and make sure that they find out whatever happened. And the LAPD said today there appears to be no foul play in the crash that led to Michael Hastings' death. Carolyn Costello, KTLA 5 News. It's been nearly three weeks since Michael Hastings was killed in a fiery car accident in West L.A. You may recall this story. The award-winning journalist captured fame with his 2010 Rolling Stone wartime article that forced General Stanley McChrystal to resign as commander of the U.S. forces in Afghanistan. This week, Kimberly Dvorak spent the day in Los Angeles to learn more about this accident. She joins us now on set talking a little bit about what she learned. And, you know, it's not not really into conspiracy theories so much, but it really is about finding out the facts about what happened here. Aren't we interested in that? Yes, absolutely. There are a number of scenarios that could have played out, and it's still too early in the investigation as nobody's been granted the police report you know, that details exactly what happened on scene. But clearly, there are a couple things that stood out in, in my mind when I went up and visited the scene and visited law enforcement. What stood out in your mind? You said you couldn't get the police report. They weren't, they weren't giving that. Out. Yeah. So what, el what else stood out in your mind? Well, the fact that when you go to mm. the, the L.A. Police Department, then you go to the Fire Department, and you go to the different agencies, they all said they couldn't comment, and some of them said they were told not to comment on the story. So that kind of stands out. If uh, you know, we look at the NSA, the government says, if you have nothing to hide, don't worry. I think it kind of has a reverse role here. Now, the uh, I think we have video of the scene. If we yeah. could show the video, we, we, you can see what we're kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. There is the actual yeah. uh, scene. Okay. So, the, so as far as the accident goes and things that we do know, it was an extremely hot fire, and I've talked to um, military personnel who have said that this is a extremely hot fire, that this is not something you normally see with a car like this. This is a 2013 Mercedes-Benz, and a statement from Mercedes said that they are aware of the accident and waiting to help the LAPD, but they have not got the call from Los Angeles Police Department as of yet. So that in 
intensity of the fire is very concerning and also the placement of the engine and the drivetrain as we see here. They are completely between 150 and 250 feet from the accident. However, the car was going south and the engine and drivetrain were behind it. And after I spoke with a couple of university physics professors, mm -hmm. they said in an accident like this, the engines and whatnot would go with the forward so velocity of the... So what does your gut tell you in something like this? You've been on a lot of these stories. What, what, are, you, what, are, you, what are you looking at and where are you, where are you going with this? Well, I'm looking at the possi all possibilities. I mean, he could have been drinking and driving. That's s s certainly something he could have done. That he was near the clubs on Sunset Boulevard, so that's a possibility. But I'm more inclined to believe that there were absolutely zero skid marks. So something else happened. Either the car malfunctioned or something was on the car that allowed that to trigger and blow up. Mercedes says their cars just don't blow up. They take great care to, for them not to do so. You said something also very interesting that, that, that cars can be remotely controlled. Is that you, you'd mentioned yeah. something to that effect. A absolutely, and that came out of the University of Southern Cal or of uh, San Diego. Here, they did a report in 2010, which they took like a basic car, like a Nissan Sentra, and using an iPad, like we all have here on the desk, mm -hmm. uh, they they were able to hack into the car system and uh, you know operate the accelerator, the brakes, windshield wipers, lights steering. So there are so many factors in play here. There's, there's a lot more investigation that needs to be taken here mm -hmm. and I will continue to follow it. Obviously if there's any kind of foul play involved, you know, we want to make sure we get that out to the public. Although mm -hmm. the LAPD has already ruled foul play out of this, which means that we should have access to these police reports in come. a timely matter. Kim Duvorak, thanks this morning. Thank you. Nice to see you. Okay, We will look into that. One of the things that we talked about last week, it, it created quite a response was the uh, Hastings death in Los Angeles, and there is new information with regards to that story, correct? Yes, there is. What have you learned? And I know you talked to some family members, did you not? I spoke with some very close friends of the family. Okay. I think the most concerning thing that I heard, and again, I, I just want to say I have not confirmed this with uh, Michael Hastings' wife, but um, a close family friend did confirm that Michael's body was sent home in an urn, meaning he was cremated. And it wasn't the request of the family that went forward and asked for something like that. In fact, the, the family wanted Michael's body to go home. And for a coroner to go out and do an autopsy and then send a body home in this... In an urn. In an urn is shocking for a couple of reasons. If there was any evidence in his, you know, body at the Alcohol, time of death... Alcohol, drugs... Anything. That's mm -hmm. gone. That evidence is now all gone. And so, and by the way, Mr. Hastings hadn't had a drink in about five, five years. years. Five years. Okay. So the the according to according to him. According to his family according members. To his family. Five years. It had been five years. He'd given up drinking and he partaked in a little bit of a. Drug. Do, this is the journalist that was killed um, in a in a crash in Los Angeles. He had come out with uh, the article um, in Rolling Stone magazine about Stanley McChrystal in 2010. Um, and he was working on another big story, we believe, about General Petraeus. <coughs> Possibly NSA, CIA. Mm. We, we, we don't, we're not for certain. Now, the um, folks that I'm talking to have said that he spoke with an attorney, and the attorney that he spoke with has all of the information on the story he was working on. And he did not even want to tell his wife about this because he said he wanted to protect her from knowing anything. So if anything were to happen to him, nothing could happen to her. Is the family considering any action with regards to the body being cremated uh, as, we're, as we understand? Okay, well, the wife has gone out and she has hired a private investigator to look into the matter. Um, what I hear from the, the parents, they kind of just want to grieve the death of their son and they want to move on from it. And they, as of right now, haven't reached out to say they're going to, you know, get, go after any kind of legal, you know, court cases, anything like that. The wife is understandably upset over the situation and things could change and they are changing. I'm getting new leads every day. A tremendous amount of support from people out there wanting to look into the story, questioning why a lot of members of the media aren't touching this. But along with that also comes folks who you know, like to have negative things and threats are made and we have to be confident. You were threatened this week, right? Yes, yes. So, okay. you know, and it, it, it goes <coughs> with high pro profile stories of this nature, mm -hmm. but it's just concerning that, you know, the, here's a member of the media, all of it, this is, we make our living doing this. That's a chilling effect if, if that yeah. turns out to be true.
Okay, Kim Dvorak, thank you very much this week, and uh, we will see you next Sunday. Yep, thank okay. you. All right, enjoy your... We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.